So one of the things I wish someone had told me when I was younger is you need to get more rest. And I'm glad, and I've talked about this before, but it's something that needs to get repeated over and over and over again. We're, we're fortunate now we're in a society where people are starting to be more cognizant of the importance of sleep, not, not only just for your brain's ability to recover, and, but more importantly, it's your body's ability to recover. And if you're trying to get fit or stay fit after 35 or while you're adulting, Sleep is the most important, sleep and rest are the most important things you can do for yourself. And why I say that is you need sleep and rest to rebuild any muscles that you're trying to build. And technically, if you're trying to build muscle, you're damaging muscle and they need to be rebuild themselves. I think everyone knows that. And also, you just need to get recovered so your body can just repair itself and get your heart rate back down and everything else. But the other thing is probably most important, I wouldn't say most important, but it's most neglected, is this idea of sleep helping you regulate your body fat or your weight. And frankly, everyone who's trying to put on muscle or not even pull on, pull on muscle, to look fit, what they're really talking about is not muscle. What they're talking about is losing weight because losing weight is frankly the hardest, 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 hardest aspect of staying fit in the modern sense. And what happens is when you don't get enough rest is your cortisol, cortisol levels rise and that's the stress hormone. And it's part of our DNA where we're in always in survival mode. And in that survival mode, your body senses you're under stress because you're not sleeping and you're not getting enough rest to recover enough to, to get through a very difficult day, you know, through an ice age. And because of that, your body goes into this triage mode, this self-preservation mode, and it puts on fat to try to weather any oncoming storms because it sees like, hey, I'm, not, I'm under a lot of stress. I'm not getting a lot of rest. That must, be, must mean I am working really, really, really hard to hunt and gather. And therefore your body's saying, hey, let's just put on some extra fat just in case it gets the temperature drops just a little bit more or the food, food becomes more scarce, food, food sources become more scarce. And so this is the thing that I, I this is the, that's the part I wish I had known years and years and years and years and years and years ago is that the X factor of people that tell me, oh, I'm eating right, I'm working out, I'm doing all the right things. But the X factor that they're not getting right is their sleep. And it's because modern day society makes us, makes us live under a tremendous amount of stress, you know, either financial stress, emotional stress, and physical stress, to be, to be honest, and, you know, compounding that with physical stress, but trying to train uh, or exercise. And to that, what's great, again, we live in a society that, Sleep, the need for sleep is becoming normalized. And why that's important is it allows us to have things that allow us to, to measure sleep metrics. And in my case, I used to use an aura ring. Well, you know, on the non, non left hand side, an aura ring, um, generation two, and which was great because it was the small, first of the small wearables that you could have. Uh, and that worked great for like 18, 18 months and it died. But then I realized um, after, you know, monitoring my sleep, sleep metrics, particularly deep sleep, oddly, I was kind of obsessed about REM because that's all I knew about. I didn't really know about a lot of deep sleep. And this was years ago. And now I understand the importance of deep sleep. But that said, my our aura ring died. Didn't feel like replacing the battery. Found I learned enough about my own self sleep hygiene that I didn't really need to track it with a ring all the time and hassle of of charging it. That said, what I use now <clears throat> is a combination of two things. It's the Apple Watch because I have it on all the time. And especially with the Series 10 that I just got, the battery life is much better. But also the thing I've been using the most uh, consistently is this app called Sleep Cycle. And this isn't an ad for it. I love this thing. I'm, in fact, I got Sleep Cycle in its infancy and got a lifetime 
subscription or membership for like $15. And now it's, it's a lot more than that. But it's a great little app that uses your, leverages your phone's microphone. Your phone's microphone. Your phone has to stay on all night. Um, and I've been using this literally for like five years or something like this. And what it does is it listens to you sleep. And I have a problem with snoring. And um, I love the fact that it picks up on your snoring and makes recordings of your snoring or coughing or whatever it is, whatever abnormalities that happen with, uh, that the microphone picks up at night and it'll record them as events and give you literally a breakdown of all the recordings and the amount of time that your sleep was interrupted because of the, whatever you're rustling around means you're not sleeping. And uh, I like that app in conjunction with when I do look at my metrics from my, from my health, health app. Okay, so here's the Sleep Cycle app. And I just thought I would show, show it to you really quick on how it works. Um, this is the, the screen that it defaults to when you open it up and it is your alarm clock setting. Typically, I try to wake up at 7 a.m. I'm not a morning person. Um, and that said, it says here, wake up easy between 6.30 and 7. It makes a determination on how well you slept that night, whether or not you should get up at the prescribed time, 7 a.m., or if you're not sleeping too well, just get you up at 6.30 because there's no point in you just laying in bed. Though, full disclosure, I lay in bed a lot because uh, I'm probably using the phone, the phone a lot. And that said, you then you have the metrics that it captures overnight in, in, in your journal entry, and it saves everything. So you can scroll back on a particular day and you can you know go back and look, oh, well, Friday night I had a good time, and how did that affect my sleep? So that's all recorded here. And last night I actually had very good sleep, 89% um, score, which is good. And it tells me I was in bed for eight hours, asleep after six and a half, well, asleep, a total of six and a half. Um, it recorded that I coughed at 11.30, which is technically when I actually, right before I fell asleep. And because I was practicing poor hygiene and using my iPad, but it gives you all kinds of other metrics. Um, your regularity, how consistent you are in sleeping, when you go to bed, when you wake up, blah, blah, blah. And it gives you the total amount of time that you your sleep was disturbed by listening to you, in this case, 14 minutes. And for me, that's actually really good. Um, but like I said, it's, it captures a lot of data. And I don't use it all the time, but it's nice to go and refer back to it to see like, oh yeah, that time I had a really good time Friday night, I had a little too much drink or whatever, or went to bed late or stayed out late. And how did that affect me as far as performance the next few days? So that's the app. Um, but that said, Sleep hygiene is super, super important. It's great that we talk about it. It's, it's great that it's getting normalized. Um, I definitely can improve my sleep hygiene. Um, you know, I get to bed, get to into bed fairly early, but you know, I'll do things like use the phone and, or use the iPad and stuff like that. But I do notice when I do cut that out and monitor and manage my caffeine intake, my sleep quality really improves. And then also the cutting out the alcohol. Uh, really, really, really improves it. Uh, but that said, the one, the number one thing in conclusion, the number one thing I wish someone had told me years and years and years ago was how important sleep was to staying fit. Um, it gives you the best fighting chance of being able to manage your weight, manage your sanity because your brain's recovering and managing your fitness because your muscles that you're trying to build are actually rebuilding themselves into something that's bigger and stronger. So next video is the next big thing that I, that I, I wish I had learned. Thanks for watching.